Welcome to episode 226, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, Building a Business from the Ground Up with Jody Stabile. Welcome to the Be That 1% podcast. I'm your host, James Silvis, mindset specialist and performance coach. And here on the show, I'm going to challenge you to think deeper, commit to greatness, and develop a stronger mindset. You'll hear stories from those who are living life on their terms, and you'll receive strategies that will help you level up. So the question is, are you ready to be your own 1%? Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Be That 1% podcast. Today, I am joined with Jody Stabile. I am in her house, her beautiful, beautiful office that has the most gorgeous decor. And uh, we just had a really great workout today at her gym, Sweat, in St. Pete, one of the best in the country to do it. And I'm really excited for Jody to be on the podcast today. You're going to hear her incredible story. But even bigger than that, Jody is such a powerful leader. She is a compassionate human being. She is changing her community one relationship at a time, one workout at a time, and definitely one conversation at a time. And I've been wanting to have her on the podcast for some time now. Uh, We had a chance to meet two years ago. We started working together and she's just been exploding in all areas of her life. And so I'm excited for you guys to hear her wisdom, hear her insights, and all the strategies that she's used to grow her business, sustain it, and live life on her terms. Without further ado, Jody, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, James. Of I'm so course. Pumped. All right, so for the audience to get to know you quick and in a hurry, I have a series of rapid fire questions for you. So first question is, where were you born and raised? I was born in Holyoke, Massachusetts, but I was raised here in St. Petersburg, Florida. Okay, what's a philosophy that you live by? Failure to me is not really failure. It's more of like a pivot Mm -hmm. or a redirection. Yeah, I like that. What do you want to see more of in the world? I want to see more conscious living. People, Mm -hmm. you know, making the life, you know, creating the lives that they want, living Mm -hmm. it to the fullest, the healthiest, and just being super successful in whatever it is that they choose. Yeah. What is a game-changing book that you've read recently or in the past? Oh, um, I have one that I love and I don't remember the name of it and it is marketing <laughs> for business and it was like, mm. oh, it was, there was so much and I can go grab it. Um, but another one is like one minute manager. Yeah. Yeah. Is Quick. Efficient. Yeah. 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 And it applies to what I do on a daily basis. So it's super helpful. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay. What is a solid piece of advice that you have received recently or in the past that have served you well? Um, to... Let people do, um, like kind of like let go of control, (laughs) let others, you know, do their part. Mm -hmm. Um, progress is better than perfection and to like delegate and hand things off Mm. sooner than later. Yeah. We'll definitely get into that. (laughs) (laughs) And then last question, I know it's a loaded one and there's probably many layers, but answer it to the best of your ability. What did you have to give up? or sacrifice in order to get to where you are today? You mean like, what am I currently sacrificing, James? <laughs> yeah. um, I, I had to sacrifice, I feel like it's a lot, but time, mm-hmm. energy, mm-hmm. sleep, relationships, mm-hmm. there's a lot of sacrifice that went into kind of where I'm at today. Yeah. And I'm learning about that. Yeah, <laughs> Learning how not to always have to sacrifice, and there's gonna be some sacrifices, but yeah. I think, um, kind of choosing the sacrifices rather than just sacrificing everything. Mm, I like that. So. I like that. Okay. Take us uh, back a little bit, catch us up on how you've come to be who you are today. A little bit about your childhood, kind of like in through the high school years, college, and then ultimately how you came to start sweat. Cool. Um, so born and raised, you know, like I said, in Holyoke, Massachusetts here in St. Petersburg, Florida, have an older brother, um, crazy story is when I was 10 years old, I had uh, three new siblings come into the house. So mm-hmm. I had my, my cousins from a death in the family. Um, I ended up having three more mm-hmm. kids. So at 10 years old, I have a two-year-old sister living with me in my bedroom. And 
So my family has been um, kind of blended and bigger as we went on, and but we've had such an awesome childhood. I have amazing parents that taught us so much. Like we were doing things back then when I was growing up that people are doing now really, you know, health conscious. I mean, we were known as like the family that eats (laughs) rabbit food. And it was just kind of funny because we didn't have like all the the vices I don't think that Mm -hmm. people tended to have. Like I'd go to friends' houses and I'm like, oh, what is this? Let me try it. We didn't get the fun cereal and stuff like that. So it was cool to grow up in that because it transferred over into my life now. And now I apply it. It's kind of like, oh man, mom, Mm. dad, you knew what you were talking about back then. So we grew up in a really healthy household, you know, went to church, really close niche family. So my childhood childhood was awesome. Played sports all my life. I was in uh, karate when I was 11. Mm. My mom made me do it. She was like, you're going to learn how to defend yourself. And then I got really good at it. Which I think every woman should. I agree. I totally agree. And it was, it was good, especially as a child, you learn so much about discipline and structure and, um, and respect and all of that. So I was, I was really happy that she put me in that when I was 11 and I got my first black belt when I was 14 or 15. Oh, wow. You got that high. Yeah. I got that high in karate. So we did that. And then, um, I got into dance. Mm -hmm. And all of this kind of plays into like where my life goes now. But, you know, I got into dance. I was on a church dance team. That's how it all started. Mm -hmm. And then um, I I got into my like 20s and I got back into martial arts, but in a different form. And I started amateur Muay Thai fighting. So I've had six fights in a ring, in the ring. My mom hated that part. I'm like, you started this, mom. (laughs) Um, So I was 6-0 with Muay Thai amateur fights. So that was fun. And then I was a dancer, not trained, but like, and the only reason I talk about that is because I was on stages with people Mm. doing things that were so huge and awesome. Mm. And I was never trained. You know what I mean? I had dancers that were dancing since they were two. And so it was really cool to see that I was, I was good at it and I was passionate about it and I stuck with it and Mm. it kind of played out into some cool things and later in life. Um, And then fitness, I started, I I, I got a job at a gym and I was working the front desk and then Mm. During my fight training, I had a woman there who was a group fitness instructor and I was, we're kind of sparring partners. And one day she was like, Hey, I need a kickboxing substitute for a class at the gym. And it was called lifestyles and this big globo gym here in St. Pete. And I was like, uh, what, what are you talking about? She's like, well, so I'll, I'll run you through it. I'll show you what to do all the things. And I was like, uh, okay, talk about like rip the bandaid off and just right. jump in. I have no certifications yet. I've done nothing. So you literally, I'm literally on a stage. I have a mic on and I have 30 people in front of me and I'm mm. going to run them through this kickboxing class. And I did it and I was like, oh my gosh, this is it. <laughs> so it was like this flood of like awesomeness. And um, that's where I found my love for mm. co- like teaching. And that was instructing back then. Mm. So I was 23. I found my love for instructing and that was very group fitness based. I'd have, you know, 30 people in class and then that grew and I would have 50 plus people in class and they, I mean, the managers and the owners would be outside of the doors like, what is happening? Like, I don't understand what's going on. (laughs) We didn't have enough equipment, all the things. I became a personal trainer as well. So that started my love for fitness. Um, And I was involved in other sports, soccer, softball, volleyball, a little bit of cheerleading, all that stuff. So I was just always involved in athleticism and Mm. physical being, you know, physical um, activity on a Mm. day-to-day basis. And from there, I, you know, things were changing at the gym and I I met some people that were starting a new concept and it was called Orange Theory. Mm. And I was, okay, I'm going to jump on board with this and I'm going to go be the head coach there. So they brought me on as the head coach. So I had to leave where I was and I would slowly, you know, I would be leaving and people were like, wait, wait, where are you going? Mm. Um, and so during that time I went and did all this training and I was like, yes, this is great. I'm going to have, have a position and a title. And I brought like 30 people with me and they all signed up for the memberships. And before the gym opened, I was like, um, so I don't think I'm going to do this. Like, I don't think this is what I can do. Mm. It didn't resonate with me. It wasn't the style of training I thought that I wanted to do. I didn't, I didn't truly believe in that style and nothing against Orange Theory. I think it's great. It really is. And it, it, it helps people get to goals that they need to get to and weight loss and all of that. But just personally for me, it didn't resonate with me. And so anyways, I broke away from there. And um, from there, I was like, I did, James, we were in, obviously like I've done a park workout, but then I was in a dance studio at one time on a wood floor with mirrors. All I had were paper plates and bands. 
That's all I had. And I would still crush it with 20 people in that class with me, up to 30. They followed me everywhere. I then worked out of the kickboxing gym. I ran some classes there. Mm. I dabbled around to all these different places that like were me just kind of like filling space and time with, I didn't want to stop what I was doing. I wasn't going to take a break from fitness because I was like, no, this is it. Like this right. is my jam. I've got this following. I didn't know that I had. Um, and they're going with me anywhere. Loyal following. Loyal following where it's like, we're inside. And like We have nothing, guys. We don't have any dumbbells, nothing. So they followed me everywhere. And then I ended up at a personal training studio. It was a small studio with five personal trainers. And we had a group fitness classroom as well as, well as spin. Mm -hmm. And it was cool. I was like, this is my forever at home. Like, I mm -hmm. loved it there. I had a team that I worked with. Um, I got to walk in and do my thing and really like shine there and my people followed me and I grew my following there. And then the gentleman that owned it, he moved and was going to try to run it remotely. It ended up failing. Mm. So I'm literally in the gym training a client one morning and the new owners of the building walk in and they're like, hi, it's nice to meet you. I need your key. And I was like, wait, what? They're mm. like, yeah, we need the key. You're, you're done. Like you, you and your client need to leave right now. And we're, we're back. And I was like, wait, so I, I have people to train tomorrow. I have like a staff, yeah. you know, I've got like eight clients tomorrow. Like, what do you mean? I had nowhere to go. So that got ripped under, you know, out from underneath me. And I was just like, Oh my gosh, like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And at the time I started dabbling into CrossFit and I was at this gym that they were super nice, super cool community based. I loved it. And so I just asked the guy, I was like, Hey, so I have like all these clients and it, is there any way that I can like, I don't know, just rent space from you. And maybe like, do you mind if I teach a couple classes? I can do it in the other room. I'll keep it small, whatever. And so they granted me that. Um, so the next day I rolled right into the gym. I told all my clients where we're going to be. I had to get, you know, a software system and all of that so that people could pay me. And like, you know, that we would do everything as, as easy as possible at the time. People were writing me checks and giving me cash. You know, I didn't know anything about, right. you know, systems and, yeah. and how people pay through like apps. And I'm terrible at technology. So so I figured out how to get people to like, I would have people writing in on, on a pad of paper, like signing up for class, like you come and you write your name down. So I know you were there so that I could deduct from like their 10 packs that they told, you know, that mm -hmm. they bought. And so from there, I was there for like three years and it just grew and it grew so much to where like we were getting recognition from like Lululemon was coming in and they were sending their people my way. They were coming to talk to me and they were like, wow, this is amazing. And we would have 30 plus people in this, in this room and I was training all my clients and it was awesome. I loved it. I never wanted to leave. I loved what CrossFit had because it was very community based. Um, but then there was just a time where like rent kept going up and mm -hmm. you know, they kept seeing like the dollar amount of me and it was like, Oh, let's, let's up it now and let's up it again. And I was just like, man, I get it. But they also weren't giving me enough time. So I wasn't able to like have more time frame of classes that I could teach more classes and get, you know, build more. So anyways, we then move on. Sorry, this is a long story. No, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we then move from, I say we, um, I moved from, well, I, I was looking for a space and I just have to tell you this story because this is so cool. So we found all these spaces. And at the time I was with my husband who was my boyfriend at the time and we were looking for spaces and he's like, oh, you know, go to this one. And it was like big and grand and, you know, way more space, like 4,000 mm. square feet. And I'm like, mm. whoa, whoa, whoa. Like I've never owned anything. I've never rented <laughs> anything. Like I'm not the type of person that like busts through the door. Like God has to open the door and like push me through it. That's the type of person. I'm very like reserved and cautious. I'll take the chance. Like I'll put a little bit more on me than I can bear. But right. like, you know, I, I'm not like a big, big risk taker. So we were looking for places, looking for places. And we ended up finding this one place. And it's kind of funny because like somebody messaged me about it six months prior. And I'm like, girl, I'm not even looking for a place. Like, no, I don't want this place. And the place ended up still being open. So I called the place and, um, I talked to the guy and I was like, yeah, I'm looking to, you know, I'm looking for a space. And he's like, ah, oh, I'm so sorry. We have somebody signing over this weekend for that mm -hmm. space. It's another fitness, um, gym or whatever boutique or something. And I was like, ah, oh, bummer. I said, listen, if they don't call you and he's like, yeah, if they don't, if they, it doesn't happen for whatever reason, you know, whatever thinking that's, yeah, you know, right. I'll call you on Monday. Right. I get the call on Monday and he's like, Jody, I don't know what happened, but these people, they never showed up. So like, if you want it, it's yours. I'm like, okay, that's God's way of telling me this is where <laughs> you're going. So I was like, 
all right, sign on the dotted line. I now have this building and this quote unquote business that I'm like, what am I doing? I have no idea what I'm doing. All I know what I'm good at is I know how to train people. Mm. I know how to train people, get them results and build kind of like network and community. And we were doing that. Like people were becoming friends with each other and they were doing business together. And I was just like, I love that. So started at the small facility. It was, you know, we made it awesome, but it was still kind of it was never janky. Don't get me wrong. Right. We never put our name on something that's like sloppy, but like it was just, you know, we didn't have AC. We had one bathroom, no shower. We had no, we just had one bay door, no air con- airflow through the building. So it got really hot in there and we'd pack them in and we do small classes. We started at like six and eight and then we'd get to like one class to be like 20 and it's like, oh wow. And I remember getting up there and like, we, we, you know, get the computer system set up and I had, I was running front desk. I was, I mean, we laid the floor, we put the rig in there, we've got all the equipment. I was running the front desk, I was doing all the classes, I was cleaning up after, I did everything, but I showed up every single day. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a day that I called in, I wasn't taking any vacations, all of that. And everyone who's ever built anything knows what goes into this. So anyways, after that, we built up to like 50 members and I was like, wow, this is awesome. And by 75, it was like, okay, we're getting kind of Mm -hmm. big. And so my husband at the time, now he's my husband, he ended up just randomly passing by this building and it was open. And, and it's funny cause I'm always thinking forward. Like even when we're in this, this space and I'm like, it's awesome. Like, it's great. Like I'm making decent money, not great money, just decent, but like lights are on. I don't have a problem paying the bills. Like I love this. People are showing up that it's fun. So he finds this other space. It's double the space. And I'm like, no freaking way, bro. Like, I'm not ready. Like, what are you talking about? And he's like, I think you need to look at it. So it just so happens that the same landlord owns this no building. Way. And so I called him. And I was like, Chuck, can we go check this out? He's like, sure, sure. So we go in and I'm like, oh. And I just see everything that could mm. happen. I'm like, this could be over here. And this could be over there. And I got super excited. And he's like, I will let you know. There's a couple of gyms. Of course, again, there's a couple other fitness facilities looking at this place. Now that I think about it, I'm like, were you doing that on purpose to get me to buy? <laughs> but I, I was like, okay, okay. And I saw what it was going for at the time. Um, the rent on like Zillow or whatever it was at the time. And I was like, there's no way I'm paying that. Mm-hmm. And so we're in it. And I'm looking. I'm like, this is amazing. And so at the end, I was like, all right, Chuck. If you could give it to me for this price, I'll take it. And he was like, I'm really sorry, Jody. He's like, I can't. I was like, ugh. Okay. I was like, I understand. So we go, we walk out, we're ready to shut the door and lock it. He locks the door and he turns and he goes, you know what, Jody? You've been such a good client, like such a good uh, tenant. I'll, I'll, I'll do that for you. I was like, what? Like, Man. this is God showing up again. So... That was the rebrand. So my prior business was named The Body Shop and it was Mm. great, but I didn't want to be known. I was known as more of like a female fitness coach kind of thing. I wanted it to be gender neutral. I'm like, these workouts aren't girlish. You know, we, we don't, we don't do girly workouts. So I wanted to appeal to the masses and I wanted young professionals and I wanted guys and I wanted girls. So we rebranded. And we came up with the name Sweat and the new logo and the new colors. And now it has been magical. Don't get me wrong. It, it was great. But once I started working with you, then it got magical. But so that's kind of like the story of yeah. how it all, not yeah. by any, you know, perp- I didn't do it. Like we weren't in my head back in my 20s going, I one day want to own a gym. Never did it. It was kind of like you were guided. It was kind of guided, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then you saw an opportunity and, and then you and just kind of- And I didn't shy of away from walked it. Yeah. Away, yeah, yeah, walked into it. Yeah. That's pretty cool. A couple, a couple of things in that that I wanted to, to touch on was, you mentioned Muay Thai. And I know that was like early, early in your yeah. story. That's why I wrote it down. But I'm curious what lessons mentally you learned in Muay Thai oh. that still apply and have helped you uh, in business and just resilience or in the way that you think. Literally so much. So mental toughness for one, mm-hmm. that carries on, I think, in so many avenues. So it helps me as a competitor, right? right? As right. an athlete, as an athlete in Muay Thai, I then went to an, be an athlete in, in CrossFit. I competed in CrossFit competitions. So I always had that mindset of it's you or me. You know mm. what I mean? It's, it's either I'm going to push through and tackle this head on and win or 
I'm going to get defeated and I'm going to, you know, put my guard down and get knocked out, you know? So, um, my coach back then, I mean, he was just, he was awesome. It was always, it was tough love. Yeah. It was always like, suck it up. You know, like we're here for an hour or we're training for two hours or you got a fight coming up. Like it is you and them. And, mm-hmm. and so it's really, it was really helpful to hone in on the tough thing that you need to tackle or the tough you know, situation or the, the discomfort there. Oh my gosh. I lived 10 years uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. You know, I was always sore, always tired, always challenged, sparring guys, getting knocked down, literally kicked in the face. Not that this sounds <laughs> great, but like I use all that now. It's like hundred percent. I've gotten down. You're not so fighting many- somebody. You're just fighting an ideal or oh, yeah. a, a vision. Uh, yeah. You know? So, so that transfers to my current position as an athlete and then my athletic training for myself transfers over to me being a coach. Yeah. So the more I'm a student, yes. I'm such a better coach. And that's the one thing I teach my staff all the time. I'm like, if you're not in here with these people going side by side and feeling what they're going through, mm-hmm. how are you coaching them? Yeah. And that's, it's so important. I think that like we make such an impact on the mic every single day. I mean, you got to experience it a little bit today, mm-hmm. you know, just with, with one of my coaches, Alyssa, she just gets down into your soul and what gets you to want to push a little bit harder. And so Yes, with, with with my coaching aspect, that's helped me a ton. With my business aspect, that's helped me a ton too. I, yeah. I think all the time, I'm like, it's not rocket science what I do, and it's been done by so many people, so that is one thing that helps me to, to not go, well, it just can't be done. Like, I know it can be done. Mm-hmm. So now it's just, am I going to put my guard up and fight to get to the, the, the point that I want to get to, or am I going to, you know, go yeah. back and, and quit? Um, so it's always that Muay Thai mentality has been, I, like I think, follows through with a lot of things. You, you mentioned the 6-0 and o fights, right? Yeah. And, and I know uh, I'm going to be interviewing the a, a, a world champion here soon in a fighting, so hint oh, to cool. everybody listening, that's coming up. But I'm curious what, in a fight, like that's the most primal thing that you can do, right? I'm sure your yeah. heart rate's exploding. exploding. Uh, your mind can go many different places. Mm-hmm. And those that are able to win are not only in shape and skilled, but mentally they, they have more calmness mm-hmm. or resourcefulness or centeredness. Mm-hmm. I'm curious how you cultivated that and what were some strategies that you used in the mix of a fight that helped you become victorious? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny because we always, I think everyone says it now that like, I wish I knew now what I knew then. And I was like, now I'm like, I'd be so good. But because back then, like I, I was just really good at, at fighting. I was a great, I had great kicks. I was, I was strong for a female. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I was good at it, but I, I didn't have the like killer instincts. Mm. I didn't go into the, the ring wanting to like destroy this girl. I was like, this is what I practice. Like I want to, let's test my skill. You know what I mean? And so, mm-hmm. so the being in the ring was was cool. Um, I, I did lose track of your question a little bit. So yeah, I, no, it was the so what were you saying to yourself in the mix of a fight that helped you stay calm right. when someone's trying to hurt you basically? Right. And and that it is the most adrenaline you will ever feel in your life. And to the point where I'm like, why am I doing this? I hate it. I hate the adrenaline rush. I did. But I was good at it. And in the ring, I was just like, I used it as like kind of like a chess, you know, like Mm -hmm. they give, I'm going to give like, it's, I just, I liked, I I practiced so much and it was my way of performing. It was kind of a performance and I was able to test my skill. And in the ring, I would, I would all, I would have to like calm my mind because it would be insane, intense. Like you're shaking, you're jittering. But the second that bell rings and that first punch is thrown, now you're like, okay, we're back in. And, And so capturing your thoughts Mm -hmm. and then learning how now I feel like I wish I knew all that I know about breath and Mm -hmm. about like, I clearly did a decent job at it in my twenties learning how to, cause I would have to calm my mind too. I would be praying in the corner and like really have to like bring it down a notch cause you could easily get in that ring and just try to go ham. And it was like, no, let's, let's ramp it up. You know? So I, I would always try to think, think through the situation, tell, mm-hmm. tell myself this is something that I've trained, you know, just reminding mm-hmm. myself that I'm, I'm good enough to be in this ring. I can totally do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and to like, you know, just continue and, and push through 
Yeah. So the self, struggle, self with talk was, was yeah, self-talk reminding sure. yourself of the things that you've done that <clears throat> qualify you to be. Yeah. The, all the training, the coaching from my coach in the training is all the stuff that you have to play out in your mind. Mm-hmm. You got to remind yourself all mm-hmm. the time mm-hmm. of why you're doing it, what you needed to work on in the past. Like, are you working on it right now? You know, mm-hmm. always having to remind yourself of, of what mm-hmm. you were taught, the lessons that you were learned, and then how to kind of be calm-ish right. in a fight. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that I love about boxing is that you don't think about anything else Mm-mm. when you're there. And nope. it's, it's the most extreme level of presence. And that is a transferable skill that you can bring to your relationships, oh, yeah. to your business. Mm-hmm. And and then there's also a level of confidence that you walk around with when you put in that type of work intentionally. Mm-hmm. Uh, that you can defend yourself, that your body is capable of, you know, just doing hard things yeah, and, yeah, and, for sure. and all of that. So that was pretty cool. I wanted to, to see what your thoughts were. And that's nice to hear that your self-talk is on the reinforcement side. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that I liked about what you said was your, your cousins who became like your siblings. Th- something that I wanted to pull on there was like community building. Mm-hmm. I know that's big with sweat and that's one of the reasons why your your fan base is so loyal and they rave about you. Yeah. You know, so much so that now you're getting like national attention. And it comes down to your ability to create relationships and make people feel a certain way. And I, I'm curious how much of that came from the blending of families. Well, you seem to always pull out these thoughts because I've never thought of it that way, but it probably has to stem from that. And yeah, I mean, getting three new siblings at 10 years old and learning how to share and give and talk and communicate and then Mm -hmm. like love and all of that definitely probably helped me to where I am. And it's funny because I tell people, I tell my staff all the time, I'm like, I am not the best trainer in the world. I am not the smartest. I am not the, there's nothing about me that is different than anyone else. The only reason I have built this business is because of relationships, mm-hmm. literally. And it's, it's one thing that I tell them all the time. I'm like, you, we stop what we're doing. We say hi to every single person that walks in the door. We say hi to every single person that leaves. We know people's names. We know their kids. We know that they went on vacation. We knew that they had an injury. Like it is mm-hmm. probably the number one thing that I've done right in building this business and, and, and business, but like in the start of it, it was building the community mm-hmm. and it was building like fans and people that like loved me personally and then loved what we had at right. wherever we were, right. whether that was the dance studio or whether we were at the kickboxing gym, taking class, wherever we were, we had a group, a tribe, mm-hmm. you know? And I think that people really long for connection and tribe and community and that's something that like now we, we put out there everywhere. And mm-hmm. although, you know, I had, I had a gentleman that I was working with as a business coach and he was like, okay, yeah, like I get it community, but let's, let's hone in on the rest of what you do. And I'm like, okay, I get it. Like we want to talk about like we're results based driven, high intensity interval style training gym. We want to give everything, you know, everyone input as to like what we do, right. but I always resort back to the community aspect. Cause, Cause like, that's where it starts. Huge. Yeah. That's where it starts. Right. And then that's kind of where it stays. Like if they're, people are staying cause they feel connected. Exactly. They're and leaving that, when they're feeling like, I don't know anyone. Right. This is crazy. Like, why am I showing up here? Yeah. And the moment that starts to crack is the moment people start t- going elsewhere. Yeah, exactly. Right? And so, um, in the, in the research of like building culture, Google did this study called Project Aristotle. I don't know if you remember, Mm -hmm. but in 2012, they hired like the world's best like psychologists, sociologists to study their top teams inside the company. Mm -hmm. So teams ranging from two people all the way up to a hundred plus. And they wanted to figure out like, why are these teams performing better than all these other teams in sales, in marketing, in IT, different kind of teams. And they came up with five main elements and I won't go over all five, but the first and the most important one is psychological safety. How comfortable do the people feel in that environment? Mm. Do they feel comfortable enough to say, I don't know, I don't understand, help me? Yeah. Or do they feel that, you know, I am not going to be judged by being myself? Mm-hmm. And if you can make people feel like that, if a leader can create a space like that, people won't want to leave. That's cool. Yeah. You know? and, and that's actually the basis of 
delivering the right feedback, not positive feedback, but truthful feedback that helps an individual rise and grow with a body, you know, like you're helping people, not just with their bodies, but their minds. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have that culture set up, that's based on that deep level of connection, then the feedback you give them won't fully be received. And if they don't fully receive it, then how can they fully grow to their potential? Yeah, exactly. Right. So it's kind of like I'm taking what you've done and kind of putting the label academic lens on it yeah. to, to show the validity of it. But that that's literally what you're doing. That's interesting. Yeah. I like that. So and everything that you say, I now think yes to like the clients, but now to like mm-hmm. now because being coming a leader because we've grown to what we've grown to and I have a staff of like 10. Yeah. Now I like shift my perspective on things to not just getting these people to learn how to do push ups better or, or go faster on their run. But how do I coach my staff? Yes. You know, and anytime, it, anytime we end up losing someone, I take it to heart. I'm like, oh, like what happened? Why did they mm-hmm. leave? But I love that you brought that up because I think we do need to, and we do, we, we yeah. have a safe space, but I want it to be like yeah. a super safe right. space. I like that. Right. Safe space to talk about hard things. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so that's, that's nice. The other um, thing that I noticed through your story is just your, your level of resourcefulness of when opportunities are presented and you've never done something before, you don't stay stuck on the fact that you haven't done it before. Right. It's like, well, I guess what's, what's just the next step that I need to do. And then just doing that next step. And that next step opens the door to the next step, to the next step, to the next step. And then you look back, you're like, man, six months ago I was here and and now I'm here. I know. You know? And so, um, that's really cool. (laughs) And, and being that you've done Muay Thai dance, lots of sports, CrossFits, like you've dabbled in a lot of things. Maybe the element is physicality, but still a lot of new disciplines. Mm-hmm. And I think in order to do all of those and to do all of them pretty well at a high level, you need to have a certain way of thinking about those things so that you don't get caught in bringing other elements of like, let's say Muay Thai into dance and mm-hmm. you can learn a discipline for what the discipline is to extract the, the wisdom from it and then rise to a really good level at it and then bounce yeah. like get out of it and then go into the next thing yeah so um that's really cool i just wanted to point that out to you because that that's what i was listening for as you were saying all these things i'm like man she's done a lot of different things right um and she's rose really high in all of them yeah you know i i it's funny because my mind was just going to like um my, my mindset behind all these new levels mm-hmm. that i get to I'm the one thing that I don't ever do is like, I'm, I'm also so faith based that like, even in those trials and discomforts of the next level or being at a level to where you're like, I don't even know what level I'm going to next. Like having the door closed in my face saying you're, do- you're done here. I'm like, Oh, like, what do I do? I don't, mm-hmm. I could easily be like, I don't have a job anymore. Sorry guys. You know, mm-hmm. and like pivot and try to go find like, I don't know, real estate or go get a regular job, whatever it was. But like I, I just never, I also never talked down to myself, mm-hmm. even like in a workout. I'm never telling myself like I suck. Like mm-hmm. I don't care. Like I'm like, I, I'm just fully confident in where like, like at every stage there's, there's levels, there's stages, there's growth. There's, there's also like moments of being in something and learning from it. So I've always just been really eager to you know, stay the course and mm-hmm. like see what the next step le- le- feels like. And yeah, this one's uncomfortable and we're growing and I'm doing something new or whatever, but it was, it was mm-hmm. always kind of like invigorating fun, you know? And I just, I just constantly had to, to t- talk. I, I, I tend to talk to myself in the car, but like no matter where I'm going in the car mm-hmm. in the morning, I'm talking to myself about like, I'm setting this stage for the day. Like don't care that this is a new business or a new place that I'm going to be running my business out of. Like, we're going to have a great day and these people are going to come in and get a great, you know what I mean? So like, I just, I also reinforced like to myself that this is good. Yeah. This is good. We're growing, we're learning. Maybe we have to pivot either yeah. way, but it's all good. It's You're never controlling like, the meaning of the situation. Yeah. Right. Cause there's many ways that we can all perceive what's happening to us, but because you are so rich in faith of things are happening for me, um, that brings with it a level of dialogue that says, okay, this is a challenge. Yeah. And we don't know what to do yet, but we're going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Like there's always a hope to, to get it done. Yeah. There's never a moment that's, let's like, um, because I don't know how to do that. That means it can't be done. Right. That, that hope of it opens up the possibility that then brings in the story that you tell yourself 
of like, I'm going to go do this. I don't know how yet, but I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure it out. And that story like hypnotizes you in quotations to, to pursue it. Mm -hmm. And then you wait a few months and, and you actually have it. Yeah. And it seems like you've done that many times in different areas of your life. Yeah, when you, when I talk about it, I do realize we've done it, or yeah. I've done it. Yeah. I say we, I don't know why, because I've always, I just think of everyone as my teammates. <laughs> That's the community. Like, yeah, I'm just thinking of like my team, my husband, or whatever. But yeah, yeah, I definitely. That's cool. So, how when you, if, uh, I imagine because you you grow at at a really good rate, that there is fear that comes up about what that next level may entail, right? Mm-hmm. Like, man, well, that's a big goal. Okay, let's do it. But like, whew, Every time. that's crazy, right? All the time. Yeah. So, so how do you manage that? And how do you keep it in a healthy zone? Because sometimes when those fears come in, we can get paralyzed by uh-huh. them, think about them too much, and then we overanalyze and become paralyzed by that. Don't do and then it. don't do yeah. it, right? Or we just, yeah, just stop. And some people can transmute that fear into the right amount of energy to surge forward. Mm -hmm. How do you process that? I I mean, yeah, that's how I typically do it. I vent first. (laughs) Like I immediately come home and I'm like freaking out about, but to me, the more I talk about it, it's weird. Like I, I'm better at speaking and then hearing myself and then processing those thoughts and then coming up with my solution. Mm. If I hold it in and just sit with my thoughts, I'll second guess. And, but when I can talk it out with somebody and I, like you've known, I'm a really <laughs> good talker. Yeah. Like I can just talk, but I can talk really well about my feelings. So I tend to, you know, come or go to someone. I don't know if that's my husband. Typically it's been my husband. And then I got to the point where I hired you because I, I need some kind of direction with the thoughts of, you know, where I'm going, how do I persevere? And I, and I, like I said, I've, I've always been a doer. Like I'll do the thing until I'm just like so tired. You know what I mean? Like I'll, I'll, I'll do it all and I'll do it all myself. Um, but now I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to get to next levels smarter, Yes. you know, yes. and, and make the, the process more enjoyable because like we've discussed before, there is no end goal. And I have to right. remind myself that like the next level doesn't mean we're done. It's just the next level. And like, how am I enjoying the process in it? Who am I teaching during this time? What am I learning, learning during this time? So I try to just remind myself to like be in it mm-hmm. and not overthink it and mm-hmm. not, and not necessarily always think to that X goal, but I do because I am a visionary. So I, I envision the next step. I'm not, you know, upset that we're not there but I am the one that constantly wants progress. I want to see growth, you know, and I've learned that recently about myself. I didn't know that that's what was, what I was doing at every new level. Um, yeah, but yeah, I feel it's, it's interesting because, because I relate to you in many ways of, of like what's next. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and it has driven me in ways that no other thing can. And I'm, I don't want to get rid of that. The, the thing that's helped me is something that, um, What's his name? Dr. Michael Gervais is a sports psychologist for the Seattle Seahawks. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about presence. Like when athletes at a high level get into the zone in quotations, Mm -hmm. um, they have this extra level of performance. They're able to see things in real time. It's almost like things slow down. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that things don't slow down. Like you're not... It may seem like things are slowing down, but really you're not thinking about the future, which compounds time mm. because it's the moment overlaid with a future moment, which makes time feel faster. Mm-hmm. So when we're future oriented, it's like we're moving at really fast rates and then our mind thinks quickly and then we analyze fast and then we start talking faster. Yeah. And so then it just like naturally brings high levels of excitement or anxiety. Mm-hmm. And if that goes unchecked, that can also lead to bleeding out yeah. of energy. Yeah. But when you slow things down, you bring yourself back to the here and now, things naturally slow down. But it's not slow. It, it's me. It means that you're actually on time and in the moment. Yeah. And in the moment. Yeah. You and the moment are one. Right. And then being there, that's where ultimately um, people do their best. And so that's what, when you talk, I was like, oh man, I get that. And then the moment I realized that there is no end game, it's almost like I didn't stop feeling 
the anticipation of wanting to get there, but I just realized that this is a never ending game that I'm choosing to play. Yep. And it's not on your time. Right. <clears throat> like I can want what I want when I want it. Doesn't mean it's going to happen yeah. right then and there. Right. You know, and I'll because, pursue it. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm now not pursuing it to get it. I'm pursuing it because I know of the person I'll be as I continue to grow. And yep. that's more meaningful. Yeah. Right, like the the day to day is has become more exciting than the anticipation of the goal. Oh yeah, for sure. And that has led to so much more energy sustainability on my end, and it's brought so much more enjoyment to the things that I do on a daily basis. Yeah. That um, whereas before I kind of just got lost in the, um, oh I can't wait till I have it. And I have to remind myself of this daily because everyone comes into the gym and everyone's like second location look how big you are oh my gosh bursting at the seams and i'm like slow down homie you know what i mean but then it does i sit with it and i'm like maybe we should do a second and i don't know do we want to go fifth location and then you know are we gonna franchise and and how big do i want to be and then i can go on that route of i'm not doing enough because i'm not the biggest (laughs) and the best and whatever but I believe that we are so wholeheartedly right. because we just have such an awesome product and not everyone knows of who we are yet, but I just have to remember that like, play I, your game, play your game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I just remind everyone else like patience, like we're learning all that we can right now in this, in this realm. And if we go second, cool. And maybe we'll just expand and, and then, um, kind of like, uh, what's the word? Like I've had this idea of just, um, people kind of like buying our, our programming kind of thing and like mm. running our style in their gym. So I have many options and mm-hmm. I love the fact that we have options, but right. I, I, it's so easy to go down the hole and it's not necessarily, I guess it's kind of comparison, but it's yeah. just the whole, the urge of wanting more, you know, and right. especially when you hear that, like you deserve more. Right. And I'm like, yeah, I do. Yeah. But I have to sit back and go, I do, but I've gotten here and I'm, I'm very deserving of this and I love this. And like, let's be here right, right now right. and not overcomplicate things and yeah. enjoy this process because it's good. And when you are in such a good place um, and people start sharing their interpretations of where they think you should be based on how they think, um, that's where I think most leaders, if they're not rooted or grounded in what they stand for mm-hmm. can quickly Ooh, unravel. So true. Right? Because then they, they take on things that either they're not ready for or that they don't really want. Yep. And they're doing it because everyone else thinks that they should do it. Yep. So then they try it and some challenge arises or something doesn't go their way and they're like, man, I knew I shouldn't have done this. And then now there's that internal conflict that then has a ripple effect across everything else that oh, you're yeah. doing. Right? And so really knowing like what your values are, what your goals are, and how you, how in alignment things feel, Yeah. Right? Something that I learned a couple of years ago was this idea of a full body yes, right? And that's, that's where your body says yes. Mm-hmm. Like you feel, ooh, that, that's expansive. I like that. Mm-hmm. And then your mind is like, this makes sense. This looks good. This feels right. Go for it. Yeah. When those two things sync up, that's when I personally will be like, let's do it. But if something in my body isn't right, like my gut is saying, eh, slow down. Like this is not, this is not cool. Mm-hmm. But my mind's like, yeah, 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 go, 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 go. Then I'm like, let me pause for a second. I got to really sit on this. I got to journal about this. Let me meditate about yeah. this. And usually those things are the things that I feel obligated to do rather than want to do. Mm-hmm. And the things that I want to do that are full body yeses are the things that explode yeah. fast. I feel like I'm learning more about that with yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, which is exciting. Um, and then I was just thinking of something, but it just slipped my mind. But um, yeah, like full body S's, like really like learning how to listen within, right? Because yeah. when our eyes are open, we can get distracted by so many shiny objects. Ooh, bigger place, nicer car, bigger house. Da da da. We see things, and then when we see things, visions start appearing, and then we start living in these alternate realities that aren't real but can motivate us to go get them. That's mm-hmm. dopamine at its finest. Yeah. And it isn't until you start closing your eyes, tuning in, listening to what's going on inside from you, not from your parents or from your <laughs> spouse or from your societal conditioning or hypnosis. Like this is me. Yeah. What do I want? 
And you and I both know I'm a big yes person. <laughs> yeah. right, We've right. learned this. I've learned this recently that I do. I say yes all the time. But the one thing that I don't always say yes to is in my business. I'm, I'm kind of a different human when mm. controlling my business. Yeah. Like I'm yes to everyone else. I'm like, sure, I can take on this and I can pick up your kid and I'll bring you food and I'll do all the things like as a serve. Like, I don't know. Maybe yeah. I just love to like serve people and help others. And that's clearly what I do in my business. But in business, I'm, I'm good at, I'm like, I'm not an impulse buyer. Yeah. I don't make those big, you know, irrational decisions cause it's shiny. Mm -hmm. I'm like, let's be here. Let's sit in it. Let's look at it. Let's research that. Let's, you know, so I, I don't, I don't, I yeah. definitely have worked on not going that route of yeah. just doing the next thing because you can or bringing right. on all the things because right. it sounds good to someone else. Yeah. You know, and everyone tells you what you should do. I'm like, oh, really? You know, you should do <laughs> right. it. Yeah. Right. It's always, you know, you yeah. can be doing more and bigger and better. And I know someone that can help you with this. And it's like, we're good. Yeah. You know, I have to always like arms like right. people with like It's true. Everyone's and, got an opinion. Yeah. Everyone's got an opinion. And and I like when I think about the whole yes no thing. I I look at like where I started and how often I said yes. And the earlier years are definitely where you say yes to everything. That's how you're exploring. That's how you're figuring out what you like and what you don't like. And then the older you get, the more mature you get, the more specific you get. That's where more of the no's start coming in. It's no longer about how many opportunities. It's what are the right opportunities. Well, we just talked right? about this. I say yes to everything thinking that maybe this is an opportunity of some sort, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of thinking, let's wait for the opportunity that I know I want, right. that I can put all my energy into. Exactly. Instead of saying yes to all these things, hoping that these nickels and dimes are going to eventually bank into hundreds, you know, rather than pausing, checking with myself. And I'm, I'm more in tune with that now, but like mm -hmm. really seeing if that resonates or mm -hmm. am I going to wait on the opportunity that I really want? Right, so right. So saying yeah, saying no is powerful it's powerful like yeah you, in your body when someone says do you want this or what do you think about this and you're like no and you say no and that's it, it. Feels and you don't good. Like, give yourself like an explanation <laughs> yeah like, just why no. no yeah yeah there's something uh freeing about it there's something empowering about it but there's there's like you drew a line right and anytime you you draw that line you make it very clear where you stand. Mm -hmm. And when you're clear on where you stand, there's confidence there mm -hmm. because you chose. Most people don't draw that line or that line is super blurry mm -hmm. and like non-existent. And they're so back and forth with it that it, it drains them of their sovereignty, yeah. their, their, their power, because mm -hmm. it's like, well, what what are your what are you choosing? I don't I don't know. This sounds good, and then this also right. sounds good. So then you're just like playing tennis back and forth in your mind, yeah. back and forth, and that's exhausting. Yeah. I was like, no. Yeah. Done. Next. Yes, exactly. What do we want to say yes to? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know. So, I agree. Don't talk about point. blurred lines because that means that's talking about boundaries, and we know how we need <laughs> <laughs> we know we need to talk about boundaries. Right, right. But in the business, yeah, lines definitely yeah. get like laid. You have to. You have to. We have 300 plus members and like you got to, you definitely have to set some boundaries and, right. and lay some, some ground rules. That's true. Yeah. That's true. So what do you wish someone would have told you before you started your business? Oh, I wish they would have told me everything. I mean, I went into business with, I didn't have a business plan. James, yeah. I knew nothing. <laughs> like, so I mean, any kind of business <laughs> insight would have been helpful. Um, but and, you know, I've always been intrigued by, like, entrepreneurship. Like, I would mm -hmm. look at those people and be like, oh, that's so cool. Or or I would, I want to listen to the podcast. I want to read the books. Those are the things that I, I, I it's either, like, self-development stuff mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. business. Because those, those are the things that, I don't even read about fitness. Like, I should probably be reading, like, <laughs> fitness books and things like that. But, like, it, although that interests me, that's mm -hmm. not, my mind has shifted now as to being a business owner. It's not just... I mean, the product and the service is obviously like the most important thing, right. but you know, working in the business or on the business has been kind of fun and exciting and exhilarating, but also a lot. Mm -hmm. So I just, I wish I would have known earlier how important building a team is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Didn't know that. I did everything, you yeah. know, for years and team Do you think if someone would have said that at that point that you would have listened? Maybe. Cause like, yeah. I feel like when I started hearing about it, I was like, okay. And I would like, 
I yeah. brought one guy on and then I brought another girl on eventually. But but I still didn't have like framework for them. So it's still more work for me because mm-hmm. I'm like managing them now and I'm still really in the business. So I didn't I didn't really know like when I heard people like delegate and hand things off and grow, you know, your team, it's like, what does that mean? So mm-hmm. now I don't know how to run business. Mm-hmm. I also don't know how to lead a team. Mm-hmm. So now I'm trying to do a little bit of both, right? So yeah, I wish I had someone maybe just like giving me some framework as to how important each layer is. I'm very like layered details, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like start to like start to finish. Like I like to know like how what does this look like? You know, when you open the the app and you're gonna see this and then you're gonna build this and then you next layer this. Like when you can break that down in my mind for me, that's I'll perform better. But um mm. yeah, so I just I wish I had someone, you know, had someone telling me that it, it, it's going to be a lonely road. It's you, you know, and you and, and how important it is to build the team. And I was obviously doing that, building the community in the gym, but I didn't have anybody else for me when the doors were closed. I didn't have that team, the camaraderie, the, mm-hmm. you know, where I could, mm-hmm. I could share ideas and go over visions and strategies and all of that. I didn't have that. Um, so I wish I knew that earlier on. Um, but I'm also not mad at not knowing it because I think most people go into business with a partner mm-hmm. and I don't think I necessarily wanted to go that route mm-hmm. with a partner because mm-hmm. I feel like just a lot can either go good maybe and then potentially go wrong. Um, and, and maybe tell me more stuff about like back end stuff, you know, like <laughs> all the, I know. All the, I hate the back end too. Yeah. All the back end stuff. Um, yeah, with delegation, like there, there is a level of awareness that you as the, the business owner or the leader has to know in order to teach and also offload, mm-hmm. right? And, and I know I've gotten caught in this is I've, I've been so good at certain things, but I didn't know how I was so good at right. it. Right. That's right. right. So right. then, so how can I teach someone else how to do something that I just naturally built over my life. 1000%. And now I have to deconstruct how I do something to systematize it so that other people can maybe not do it to the level that I can Mm because I just have the advantage of just doing it more times and being more skilled at it. But maybe they can get to 70, 80% of that, right? That's been the challenge for me. And I know other leaders who, who also experience that is like, well, I have trust issues and how I know they're going to do it to the level that I am. They're not, they're yeah. probably not. I'm, so, I'm learning that now that resonates right? with me right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And That's at some point when you get to a certain level and you can hire skilled, more skilled people than you at certain things, then obviously that's the best case, but we have to work up to that. Mm-hmm. We have to develop our own level of awareness to be able to even pinpoint who's better at something than us. Yeah. And, and what we're not good at, what we are good at, so that we can maybe focus on the things that we are good at and hire someone else yeah. to be good at the things that we're not good at. For and, sure. And that's how you build a really strong team of Avengers. Oh, you're super I nervous. love that. And that resonates with me so much. And even like time management, if somebody would have taught me how yeah. to manage my time so that I wasn't getting feeling spent every day, you know, because it's like in your business, you're going to give and give and give because you believe in it. You're like, this is it. I, I, it's your baby. You like come up with this concept. You have this brick and mortar or whatever it is. And you're thinking like, this is it. I'm telling you. And you want to sell every single person that comes to that door on your products, you know? So you're your number one fan. And I wish somebody would have helped me in the beginning of all this stuff, all the mindset stuff. Like I was just winging it and really good at what I was doing. I'm really good at running classes and having fun environment and social settings and all of that. But I just wish I had somebody showing me the ropes on like how to manage your time, like mm-hmm. what hours a day you should be doing what. And so you weren't, your wheels weren't always spinning yeah. and you weren't keeping all the plates spinning. Um, and that you had time to play or I had time to program or I had time to rest mm-hmm. and read and do nothing or whatever. Just one you know? year. Just, go. Yeah. It was just always go. Yeah. And so I wish, yeah, I wish that I would have known now that it doesn't, it doesn't have to be burnout yeah. all the time. And you know, we talked about this the other day is it also, I don't have to be so busy all the time. Right. Because then I started losing or, or feeling that was my sense of purpose. Like, 
so busy, can't talk, been up since four, running all these classes, and it's like badge of honor, you mm-hmm. know? And it's like, okay, like who who's winning here? Like everyone else is going to bed early and right. waking up, having coffee at home. I'm living out of a mug and Tupperware, right. and I'm priding myself on that because right. I guess I thought I was better and not not that you yeah. think you're better than anybody but you're just like this is what you got to do to like run a business and right. this is and, how it and happens. maybe that is what you have to do in the beginning true right because yep. you don't necessarily have the help you're the only one that typically believes in what you have because it's yours right and then that just requires a natural tendency to put a lot of things into it right but then there's the maturity phase of that because that's not a sustainable model yeah that may last three to five years of grind. And it did. And, it right? was three to five years. And then yeah. you hit like a plateau and you're oh, like, yeah. oh, I am exhausted, oh, yeah. right? But then, so around that point, that's where hopefully sooner, but you, you start hiring the team, you start systematizing, you start um, saying no more, and then you start protecting your time so that you can transition out of the business, then work mm-hmm. on the business mm-hmm. and still scale to whatever degree, yep. your impact, your whatever. And that's where we're at now. Yeah. I'm learning so much about that. How to like, you know, be at the level we're at, how to lead, you know, and mm-hmm. still not have to feel like I have to do everything and mm-hmm. and and build the team. And, and that's just kind of where we are now that we're in the location that we're in, which is yeah exciting and fun. It's challenging because it's a new, <clears throat> you know, a new... Chapter, lesson yeah. new yeah new level of believing in others believing in your product enough to that you can systematize it right mm-hmm. and it's gonna be okay when i go away or i'm not back in there for five days and that's happened many times now and it's still working you know but but even the hardest thing now is teaching everybody to do the things Mm -hmm. and to do it the way to the level that you would have it be done and understanding that not not everyone's going to do it right but to to have a standard but to have a standard Mm -hmm. to have patience to you know put in that extra time and that extra work to know that down the road it's going to pay off Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. so Yeah. yeah You mentioned sales earlier and that you, you know, you get so passionate. I could obviously anyone listening can sense your passion and that you just want to tell everyone about it. You want to sell everyone out. It's come, 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 yeah. come experience this, right? How do you view sales? Oh, I was never into sales. <laughs> I remember when I first started as a, a personal trainer, we had to sell. Right. Pack. I was the worst. I yeah. was like, uh, and it's, so if you wanted a 10 pack, it's this much. And they'd be like, Ooh. And I'd be like, but I mean, if you don't, it's fine. Like, and that would be what I had. Like, it's okay. So now I've shifted my perspective on what we're selling. Like I'm not just selling you a gym membership. I am selling you an experience. I am selling you a product that's, you know, you're going to get results. You're going to live better. You're going to move better. You're going to yeah. be healthier. Your mindset's going to change. Like it is a full body experience. And So it's easier for me to, because I've honed in on who we are, Mm -hmm. what, you know, what we stand for, what our, you know, our, our mission statement, our core values, all of that, like knowing a little bit more. And that, that's probably another thing that I wish I knew more about is like how important all of those things were, because when you don't have the vision, you don't know what you stand for, you don't know what your mission, you don't know what your values are. It's like, what are we doing? Like, Mm -hmm. but now when you've anchored you know, what you want the business to be, what you want the experience to be, who we are as a product, who we are as, you know, um, a community, it makes it a lot easier to go towards that, that goal and yeah. keep on, on brand and keep on, on goal of, whoa, 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 that's not in our, you know, like let's veer back. Mm-hmm. This is off track or it's just, it's easier to have like, Gives you, you the know, lane. Yeah, it gives you the walk, lane right? the to stay in for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Um, I ask that because I think some of the best salespeople that I've met don't view it as a transaction. Yeah. Right? They view it as a collaboration. You know, and it's like a, it's an exchange of energy. Yes, that's what gets the other person excited to say yes. But this, the quote unquote salesman or saleswoman 
is if you're doing your job right with educating, asking questions, and you really care for the other person that you're sitting across from, it's not sales right. at that point. Yes, it, it would be categorized as a sale because now you have a client or mm-hmm. now there is an exchange of money or service or whatever. But rooted even deeper than that is a level of service, Yeah. right? <clears throat> service to want this individual to be better and, and to make sure that what you see them being better, that they also want that better mm-hmm. too. And if they do, and you know that you can provide it, then... Yeah, and then, it's funny you say that because I... For a little while, I hired a business coach and he was the sales operator of big businesses, came up with all these sales made. He was very sales, yeah. right? And so we worked together for six months and helped me with a lot. Um, but towards the end, it was all about sales and mm-hmm. every person had a dollar amount on them and every person was a number. And I finally, I, I was like, so we're going to take a break from this. And I told my general manager, I was like, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. I don't like looking at having to get this many members in the door every month and looking at every single person like, are they going to buy a membership? And that's just not what I wanted it to be about. I don't want to look at anybody as more money. I don't want to look at them as another number, as a member. Like, I wanted them to get a great experience Mm -hmm. and to feel a sense of placement or or belonging. Mm -hmm. Like my whole business is built, like I said, on the, the experience and we've never really sat someone down and asked them for money per se. Um, and when it started to get too heavy on, I know where we were going because I, I know the number that I would like to see us at because of growth. Like you always want to kind of know your projection or where you're going or all that. But I didn't want it to be like, holy crap, in order for us to get to that goal, we got to get this many members in the door mm-hmm. and we got to sign up and you know, and then when, when it started to get salesy, cause it did for a little bit, we started seeing a little bit of a turnover mm. and you know what I'm saying? Cause the people were getting lost in the whole experience. Like new member would come in and we'd catch them on the sale and they would sign up. And then what's the rest of the experience? Like then, then they're just, you know, off into the world of the black mat that I call it in the mm. gym and no one's talking to them. No one's keeping up with them, ha- asking them how, what their experience was like. Did they get plugged in? nothing was ever happening. So mm. like these, we got these new members in and they were like, all right, well, I don't, mm. we weren't connecting with them. And we did that for a couple months and I, I had to rein it back in. I was like, this isn't yeah. what we're doing. Right. And we were getting sales and all the things and getting more money every month. But I was just like, yeah, this is, it kind of feels gross mm-hmm. and icky. Cause like, that's just, that's not what we built it on in the beginning. Right. And so as much as, yeah, you want growth and, and but I think that people are going to be attracted to Things, uh, you know, like genera- like uh, genuineness yeah. and, you know, yeah. the, the, the experience and the feeling of togetherness and like and, and happiness and just a vibe. And so when we were focusing too much on the number and everyone felt like they had to hit their sales goals, it was very, we were missing it, mm. missing the mark a little mm-hmm. bit. And so I'm glad that we reined it back in and now... You know, and now, like, I mean, I, we were just talking about today. It's like, all right, we got all these sales this month and we don't, we didn't ask for it. We right. didn't, we're not trying to get that. We have to, we just, it's your brand and your product is going to speak for itself. And our, we're not visible on the street. We're in the back, in the cut, you know, behind a dump. Like there's no reason for anybody to find us, but we have the best reviews. We have people going out wearing our shirts, people going out sharing, asking their friends to come with them. Like. That's, that's what it's about. Right that's what it's about. That's our, that's our main marketing. We don't pay for any marketing right now. And I'm, I don't want to brag on that, but because I think that I probably should spend money on marketing and things yeah. like that and um, ads or whatever, but we don't do any of that. And, yeah. and we just get genuine, you know, attraction, mm-hmm. which is, is really cool. Cause, that's awesome. Yeah. We really that's like it. that. I, I enjoy that more than, than yeah. crunching numbers and like getting the sale because right. we want to hit another the next number, you know? So as we, as we wind down here, uh, what are some last minute things that you think the listeners can, can take, you know, just from your experience of, of what you've lived through and what you've been through and, and to grow a business massively, even during a pandemic and to be recognized nationally for something that started so humbly, you know, like 
what would be just some last nuggets that you can share with anybody? You know, what I find happen a lot is people, and I know that comparison is a constant thing, but I, I just feel like people want to start so big. Like they, they don't think that them starting where they're at is good enough or mm -hmm. big enough. You know, starting at that small level, not having the beautiful built out big building or, you know, the tons of followers or like you impacting the one person that then goes and impacts the five that those five could eventually potentially impact thousands, millions. Like, I think we have to think of why I'm doing what I want to do, starting it, starting small and being okay with small and learning all the lessons that you want to learn because... Like I said, people get involved in things and they get investors and they do all the things and it's really big and, and they overwhelm themselves and it's like, trust the process, enjoy it, learn from it, evolve, you know, as you go. And I just think it's so cool every level that we've been to, what we've learned, you know, it gets prettier, it gets better, it gets so much more you know, like uh, well oiled. And I, I just think that people are scared to start with less mm -hmm. because then they're not you know, as credible or they're not good enough or they're, you know, so the, the comparison game is, is, is tough to overcome, especially when starting something, because you see all the other people doing the mm -hmm. thing that you're like, well, why me? Because there's our, I know 20 people that are doing the same thing and they're already at that level, but you're going to do You're never going to do it the way that they do it. And that's exactly how you should be doing it is right. you should be doing it the way that you do it because the way that you're talking about it or the way that you're serving someone is going to resonate with the people that aren't following those people and aren't going to their business and attending their whatever. So yeah. I think we have to get out of our heads um, when starting something. And mm -hmm. if it's a passion and it's a burning desire, I think you you do it. Um, and yeah, don't be afraid to you know take the risks and yeah. just like deep dive in and 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 especially if you're doing it for the right reason, like go in, get out there, serve. Amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Where can they find you? Um, well, James, we're <laughs> so I'm trying not to hang out on Instagram as much, but that's where I am. Um, Instagram, my Instagram is at Joe body fit. And then our, our, our gym Instagram is sweat underscore St. Pete. And that's pretty much, I mean, we have Facebook too. I'm not on there as much, but awesome. yeah, cool. I don't have a book that I wrote. I'm yeah. not that cool. <laughs> I don't have all these things, but yeah, yeah. that's where we're at. And yeah. so, like I said, like I've started small, I'm still small. But we're having fun during the process and we're learning yeah. so much and impacting so many people and right. that's just where Sometimes it small is big. Sometimes small is big. Yeah. We're in a small city and we know a lot of people. It's just, yeah, yeah we made a big impact here in, in our city. And so I don't overlook that. So that's I'm very amazing. proud of where we are. So. Well, thank you for being on the show. And Thanks thank for you having for, me. Yeah, for being... This is my first time yeah, ever on podcast. I'm, I'm pumped. Yeah, it was good. So, thank you.